the wonders of the Red Sea. Today, we'll talk about the Red Sea and all its magnificent species of fish. The two-banded clownfish, the most common clownfish in the Red Sea. It is found at depths of 1 to 30 meters, generally living in pairs in association with an anemone. This is a classic example of symbiosis. The tentacles of the anemone protect the clownfish from predators. At first contact with the anemone, the clownfish jerks back, but gradually its mucus coating gives it the immunity to the anemone staying nematocysts. The benefit to the anemone is probably down to the fish's swimming within its tentacles and wafting them around thus increasing the water flow and hence the amount of oxygen available to the anemone. The anemone may also feed on the fish's waste material. The lionfish, also known as the turkey fish, found in the Red Sea and Indian Ocean. A sting from this fish can be very painful and possibly fatal. Often shelter under ledges during the day, more active at dusk, and during the night when feed on fishes and crustaceans, Lionfish use their non-stinging pectoral fins to shepherd fish into their mouths. Poisonous spines allow the fish to be conspicuously colored, warning predators to keep their distance. The Goatfish Goatfish are tropical marine persiform fish of the family Mullidae. Seldom found in brackish waters, goatfish are most associated with the reefs of the Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific Oceans. The goatfish are sometimes called the red mullets, as opposed to the grey mullets, though the name is usually reserved for the red mullets of the genus Mullus of the Mediterranean. Within the family are approximately 6 genera and 55 species. Many species of goatfish are conspicuously coloured, however, they are not popular in aquaria. Rather, goatfish are valued food fish in many countries. The largest species, the dash and dot goatfish, grows to 55 centimeters in length. Most species are less than half the size. Their bodies are deep and elongate with forked tail fins and widely separated dorsal fins. Perhaps the goatfish unpopularity among fish keepers can be attributed to its feeding habits. Goatfish are tireless benthic feeders using a pair of long chemosensory barbells protruding from their chins to rifle through the sediments in search of a meal. Like goats, they seek anything edible, worms, crustaceans, mollusks, and other small invertebrates or stems. By day, many goatfish will form large inactive non-feeding schools. These aggregates may contain both conspecifics and heterospecifics. For example, the yellow goatfish of the Red Sea in Hawaii is often seen congregating with blue striped snappers. With such mixed company, the yellow fins will actually change their coloration to match that of the snappers. By night, the schools disperse and individual goatfish head their separate ways to loot the sands. Other nocturnal feeders will shadow the active goatfish, waiting patiently for any overlooked morsels. Goatfish stay within the shallows, going no deeper than about 110 meters. All goatfish have the ability to change their coloration depending on their current activity. One notable example, the gold saddle goatfish, will change from a lemon yellow to a pale cream while feeding. Species also tend to be solitary, but will school as juveniles. Sponges. Sponges are animals of the phylum periphera, meaning they are multicellular. Organisms that have bodies full of pores and channels allowing water to circulate through them, consisting of jelly-like mesohyl, sandwiched between two thin layers of cells. 
Sponges have unspecialized cells that can transform into other types and that often migrate between the main cell layers and the mesohyl in the process. Sponges do not have nervous, digestive, or circulatory systems. Instead, most rely on maintaining a constant water flow through their bodies to obtain food, oxygen, and to remove wastes. Coral reefs. Coral reefs can be made of hundreds of different species of coral. There are two main types, hard coral with an outer skeleton of calcium carbonate, CaCO3, and soft corals that embed bits of calcium carbonate, CaCO3, inside their bodies. Although it comes in many shapes and sizes, or coral are composed of tiny individual polyps. A polyp is a tiny animal that looks like an upside down jellyfish. In soft coral, each polyp contains little spikes of CaCO3 that help hold many polyps together in structures that look like fans or whips. In hard corals, polyps sit inside little cups which they build out of calcium carbonate. Many of these cups are cemented together to make up a coral colony. Reefs are formed when hundreds of hard coral colonies grow next to and on top of each other. Since most species of coral polyps stay deep within their calcium carbonate cups during the day, the casual observer may think of the coral as inanimate rocks. At night, however, the polyps emerge and wave their tiny stinging tentacles in the water to catch microscopic organisms called plankton. What makes coral polyps so unique is that the plankton is only part of their diet. Each polyp harbors within its body special algae called zooxanthellae. These one-celled plants are sunlight and carbon dioxide to conduct photosynthesis, a process that produces oxygen and other nutrients needed by the polyps. In return, the algae gets protection and the constant supply of carbon dioxide and other raw materials they need for photosynthesis. Such a mutually beneficial relationship is called symbiosis. Without this special relationship, it is likely that there would be far fewer animals in clear tropical waters since they typically cannot support life. It is important to realize that the fish, crabs, snails, worms, and other reef creatures depend on the health and growth of the coral reef for their existence. I hope you enjoyed the dive into the Great Red Sea and now know more about all its great wonders.